I'm Reverend Rachel Tabor Hamilton, the Rector of Trinity Episcopal Church in Everett, Washington, and I'm the coordinator for our Diocesan Ethnic Ministries Circles of Color, which is a, a networking of our different ethnic ministries and communities. My name is Anila Afzali, and I am the Executive Director of the American Muslim Empowerment Network at the Muslim Association of Puget Sound. Maps, amen. We at, we at Jennifer Bearskin Sista, Stoholpstad, Alutchad, Bedat Shuaklam. Hello, my name is Jennifer Bearskin. I am Sto I am Snohomish and I am Alut. I am the youngest daughter of the Sea Monster Man. My name is Nina Fernando, and I am the program director of the Shoulder to Shoulder campaign. Be an ally in a successful manner. You know, I wish I could say that there were lots of those experiences, which is why I think something like past to understanding is so needed. But when I think about an opportunity, experience of a good allyship, uh, I think I'm kind of still waiting for that, to be very honest. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. <laughs> to be an effective ally when you're working with people of color or indigenous led movements, it's important for our allies to realize that we have to actually lead and that you have to put your own ego and beliefs of what you think is what we need to be done aside. You have to listen. You can't say, well, I think you should do this, or why don't we do it like this? We have a protocol. We have a way that we, when we are working on, say, for an action or um, working on government to government communications, it's critical that you step back and step aside and allow the people of color, the indigenous people of this land to, to lead and to speak and to just be there to listen and stand behind us as support. Not beside us, not in front of us, but behind us. Because just like I sit here today, I know my ancestors stand behind me and hold me up. And so it's important that allies learn to not let their inner thoughts or interjections to take over and to allow a learning moment to come from us who've experienced racism, discrimination, genocide on a generational basis to teach you what it means to be even just in our shoes for just one minute, but understand that you could never really know what it is we deal with or what our future generations will encounter or endure because you feel as though you've, you've made some deep connection. It's important to know we appreciate your allyship, but we need you to to just stand back and listen and let us show you what it is we are fighting for and what we are here to teach you and how you can be the best support. Often this metaphor of speaking for the voiceless or, or um, you know, being a voice for the voiceless. And, and I, I really dislike that metaphor because it takes away um, it takes away the voice and, and the fact that we all have a story to tell each and every one of us. And, uh, you know, we may not have access to the mic or, or a platform. And, you know, sometimes we're shouting and shouting and people aren't listening to us. Um, and so the role of, of allies are to make space, to, to pass the mic, to, to listen, uh, but also to pay attention to the dynamics that are at play and to step up and speak out and take responsibility and ownership um, uh, of addressing the issue. So, um, you know, for an example is, is when a man, say a white man is talking about me and asking questions about me in front of me, 
uh, to another white man. And my husband is white. Um, and so this has happened many times before. Um, and good allyship on my husband's part is, is him redirecting the questions and the attention to me so that I can speak for myself, um, so that I can and share my, from my own voice. But a good allyship is also paying attention to me and, and taking on the burden of responding when I'm exhausted. You know, or if what I'm saying is not being heard, he can use his privilege to ensure that my voice and my contribution is heard. I have been blessed to see many examples of effective allyship, uh, specifically to the Muslim community. Uh, I, Because of the work that I do, I, I am very lucky and fortunate to see the many manifestations of love and kindness and solidarity in response to even some of the most evil and hateful acts, uh, whether it's been hate crimes against individuals, whether it's been things like attacks on our mosque, uh, when we had sort of uh, people of all faith backgrounds come together, stand in solidarity with us, whether it's been when we've had uh, different groups uh, uh, threaten uh, our mosque, uh, including organizing, you know, protests to threaten uh, uh, people attending our mosque, uh, to have the, the community show up on short notice, uh, just through word of mouth and, and emails, to have a community of folks show up and make a circle of protection around us when Patriots of Washington was planning a protest at our mosque, uh, which is really like a second home for many of us. Uh, that was so powerful. And those were beautiful examples of effective allyship, where people actually show up to stand with uh, the, the people who are being targeted. And that level of sort of um, solidarity and unity uh, and collective understanding that we, we in the community together, we protect each other, that's powerful and beautiful. I've also seen effective allyship, of course, in the work that I've been able to do uh, with Reverend Terry Kylo, uh, the many examples where he has sort of stepped up and answered questions from folks who come at him with anger, uh, with, uh, with fear, uh, with other negative emotions and coming from a place where they're repeating or regurgitating, whether they know it or not, the talking points of an anti-Muslim industry uh, to hear him give effective responses in a way that actually uh, sort of can, uh, can hopefully change hearts and minds. I've been able to witness that on many occasions. I have seen that the transformation that we've been able to witness through our work together. So I have many examples. I, you know, when, when there were hate rallies, when there are anti-Muslim hate rallies uh, in 2017 uh, across the country, including in Seattle, to see so many people show up and outnumber the haters, you know, at least 10 to 1, uh, when seeing, seeing the community come together, again, of all faith backgrounds, no faith backgrounds, from all different traditions, uh, races, ethnicities, genders, uh, it, all of that stuff, people coming together and standing in solidarity and showing the haters uh, that they will not win, that we will not allow them to win, and to have elected leaders step up and also voice their support. That was significant. Obviously, with the Muslim ban, uh, people showing up at the airports, filling the airports uh, with with signs of support and solidarity uh, and calling out the outrageous and, uh, you know, re religiously discriminatory ban for what it is and challenging it uh, uh, in person, uh, on social media, in the courts and beyond. Those are all examples of uh, beautiful and effective uh, allyship that I have been able to personally witness and experience. The, an experience that I have that was a very effective participation of allies had to do with Standing Rock. And Standing Rock Indigenous peoples were basically the, confronting the oil industry, which was trying to put in a pipeline across sacred lands and indigenous lands that were protected by treaty. An Episcopal clergy person there on the reservation a, a, made a call out to clergy people and ministers from every faith tradition and invited them to come. He hoped to get about 100 people and he got 500 responding from all faith traditions from Jewish and uh, Neo-Pagan and Episcopalian, Catholic, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Muslim, everyone came. And what he did was he trained them in what to do and to not do anything else than what had been approved by the elders of that community. And we understood very clearly 
what we were all to do while we were there at Standing Rock in a peaceful and nonviolent action that was well orchestrated. And we did exactly that. And we went home. And it wasn't about us. It was about being in community and in support of the people that were there.